Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> What am I talking about? I'm talking about cement. Just your general purpose cement. No sand, no grit, no nothing. You simply just add water to the cement to create a paste, add some brick dye to create a few different colors and different tones and apply it to your course. I use Postcrete, which is a ready mixed product already. Simply add water. It's got really fine grit in it, so you could apply that over an incline, over a road. I generally use it as a dusting over certain areas just to add a little bit of grip in places, add texture. It is so simple. And you're going to pay like £6 per bag, and that's 25 kilos. The cement dye is under a tenner for a kilo. It really is a no-brainer. And here is a perfect example. This is the backdrop to the barren lands. And there is no paint at all. Just cement and cement dyes. Again, you can get white cement and use that to add a dusting of snow like we have done for the mountain. We've created landslides and a mudslide using buff and brown. Mixing the cement with black dye and gradually building it up from really black right down to really grey. Now, there's a few things that you should be aware of when using cement. If you've got rhino hands like me, I've been using this stuff most of my life, so it doesn't cause me any issues. However, it can cause some irritation to the skin if you have quite delicate skin. So please wear gloves. I'm gonna be applying this with a old paintbrush. So you might wanna put some eye protection on just to protect your eyes from any flicking because it can cause discomfort. And like I've said before, it is a cement, so it can cause burning. Okay, so you can see right away, we've got one, two, and three. And these are quite bulbous. Now, a lot of people will leave it like this. Um, I really like this texture just here and this, like, it looks quite muddy. So I'm gonna try and keep that, but I really wanna turn these guys into some boulders, some big rocks. Now, if you wanna know how I've created this texture and why it doesn't look like a giant intestine, then in the description below, I'll leave a link to the last video, which shows you how to basically get this nice, simple, and easy technique. So, take your box knife, and what you wanna do is cut into it and create kind of some facets onto the shape of it. Now what you don't want to do is go in too deep because you want to be able to make it look like it's kind of sticking out the round um, by giving it a few jagged areas. And uh, just going to remove this one away. And straight away kind of has the feel of a rock kind of in amongst the mud. Now you can see the rocks that I've carved into the lumps, the bubbles, the big bulges of spray foam and it just adds a little bit better dynamic to it all. Putting some rocks in amongst the actual spray foam to make it look like you've got two different things going on like rock and mud incorporated into the same thing. So before we apply the cement what we're going to try and do is just get rid of the shine with a bit of sandpaper. Now you don't have to do this everywhere, just want to key a bit of the surface up, as you can see, all over the area. Don't try and get in all the gaps, that's not a problem, but you just want to create a type of surface that the cement can adhere to. Now because we've run the heat gun over the top of the polystyrene, it's already created a rough texture for it to grip to, so that will already be suffice. And I've stuck in a few twigs that we can then dress up as trees and we'll also put smaller branches glued in once we've done it. But I always put the big stuff in first and then cement around the bases. So let's talk consistency. At the moment, I'm just looking at my mixing bucket. 
what I'm going to be doing is adding just a splash of water into the bottom. Maybe two cupfuls. And then, normally I'd use a paddle on my drill, but I'm not going to do that because the drill will just overpower the volume. So I'm just going to take an everyday stick. You can use anything to kind of stir it. Paint paddle. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm gently going to just slowly introduce the, the neat cement powder into the water. Just kind of breaking it up as I'm doing it nice and slowly. Just but It just stops getting big clumps of cement when you're mixing so you can get a nice smooth consistency. Now, keep stirring and keep stirring until you kind of get to the point where for the consistency is that of a custard or a, a, a yogurt. Now, sometimes what will happen is you may get it a little drier than you expected and you simply just add a little bit of water at a time until you kind of get the right consistency you're looking for. But this is looking pretty good. Just make sure that all the water is mixed into the mixture. Now, this is pretty much the perfect consistency. You can draw a line and it just about holds itself in place. It's not too wet, and it's not too dry. If it's too wet, it simply just won't take to the polystyrene and you'll be there trying to paint it forever. If it's too dry, it just won't smear. It won't travel, it'll clump up in places. You don't want that to happen either. Now the next thing you're gonna do is add black dye and this is all personal preferences. I'm just gonna add a little dusting over the top and then mix it in. Now it does take a little while to mix the dye in properly, so really give it a good stir. Just going to add a touch more because I just want it a little bit darker. I like my base coat quite dark that way as I build it up I get quite a nice dynamic of the different shades of greys and blacks. Now I'm going to be adding a buff and black dye to the next mix to create the mud road but that one's looking pretty good. So I'm going to get ready and apply this one. Now the next step is as simple as pour and brush. You want to use an old paintbrush. I use that to stipple it and smear it everywhere. Take your cement. Take your cement. And pour it in. things you're going to need to know about using cement to cover your mini crawler courses. If you make the consistency too wet, it just won't stick to the polystyrene and it will take you coat upon coat upon coat to get it to fix. If you mix it up too stiff, you're going to really, really have a sore wrist afterwards trying to smear that around with a paintbrush and it just won't go anywhere it'll just clump where it gets caught and you'll just end up building big cement mount and it's going to take a few coats so don't try and rush it if it really doesn't coat the first time don't be disheartened with it it does take a little while for it to coat i normally use the slightly thinner stuff to use on the brush on the side walls, on the background, and anywhere where the truck's not gonna hit, just coat it, and then when you do another coat, it'll have a small thin layer around it. If it's not being hit, it doesn't have to be so durable. But when this goes off, 
it's going to go off so hard. It's just great. I just love the texture it gives. So as you can see, I've already applied a dark coat on this middle section. And now I'm just going to be working on this section just here with the batch I've just mixed up. And you simply take your container and your paintbrush and you just get it in there. And use your paintbrush to simply paint it. Now what you'll find is if, if when you paint it, it doesn't adhere to it. Let, let me just get some water going on here. Like, so here you can see where I'm just bringing the fat up to the surface. We call it fat. It's actually just where the water comes through. You'll notice it kind of creates this, uh, it's almost like it is waterproof and that's because it is. But when you've got the actual cement muck, it will adhere because we heat gunned the polystyrene. It does have a gripped texture and that is enough to grab the cement. And then we can just get to painting everywhere you need to. But the good thing about this is that you can get it in all the little gaps, all the little crevices that kind of was caused by the spray foam and, and almost smooth some of it out. And that way it gives it a much organic texture. You know, drag the excess out of areas. If it starts clumping, you don't want it there. Just, just stipple in there and pull it out. It really is down to you at this stage of your personal preferences to how you want it to look. Take a closer look of how this effect works. And this is just the first coat. What I'll do is mix up just maybe normal looking cement and actually paint these bits in a different color. So they pop out. I'm gonna mix up a brown and add some accent browns into it. So once I've built up with the first coat, I then apply the second coat in different colors, adding texture throughout the whole of the build. I see a lot of people using the plaster bandages and I can see that that's beneficial when you're using cardboard and multiple different textures. But when you're just using polystyrene and spray foam, it's, you don't need to. With this, once you've done the first couple of coats and let this cure, It's absolutely rock hard. And then you can douse it with gravel and grit and nothing's gonna harm it. Your trucks can steamroll it <laughs> and it's not gonna chip. It's not gonna wear away. Now there's a few downsides to using cement. It is, however, just polystyrene and spray foam, which under compression does collapse, which will cause the surface to crack and crumble. But an SCX24 or any other mini crawler will never have that weight to do it. So the only time that this ever cracks is if clumsy idiot here puts his elbow on it or I pushed on it or I'm standing on it. So that would happen with any form of coating you were doing. If you were doing a bandage or anything like that, if you put pressure on the polystyrene, the polystyrene is going to move. That's causing the surface to crack. In summary, bog standard cement, non-hydraulic cement, no sand, no grit, just mix it with water, add brick dye to obtain your color of choice, reds, browns, yellows. Remember, it's gonna come out gray anyway, concrete, that's the color it's gonna look like. And you can blend those tones throughout. You can mix different colors at the same time so you're not allowing 
the black to completely set before you start mixing greys in. It's just a great product. You don't need to paint it. You don't need to do anything to it. And it is durable and has plenty of grip. So this is a perfect example of cement coating. You can see the different layers of textures of different colour cement. Not only will you have plenty of grip, but it's as solid as Alice's. Like I've said, this is just the first layer. You're gonna to wanna to do two of these. I'm gonna leave this now to dry for about 24 hours until it goes slightly green. And then I'll apply another coat to it. So what I've done here is added a bit of buff in with the black dye until I kind of get the kind of look color I'm looking for. And it's kind of like a clay dirt look now it's difficult to know how this is going to go and dry unless you did a tester to gain the perfect color but really all i'm trying to achieve is a brownie muddy dirty color to kind of just separate the road and a few areas and this so as you can see i've started building up some of the other layers this is a brownie dirty color i kind of put in a few patches I brushed over some of the dark areas. Some areas I actually make it a little wetter just so it looks a bit more like mudslide and especially on the embankments and stuff. So this is a real kind of muddy, rocky kind of area. And there's a few techniques you can kind of do with the brush just to kind of really accent the fact that this is uh, an embankment. You can just gently kind of stipple it out and you'll you will come across areas where for polystyrene might show through but you can just go back over it again and again until you're happy with the kind of effect you're after now we're going to be sticking some bushes and grasses all along here um so it's not the uh the end of the world if something does come through and now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to find out you know these bits here these are like the rocks that we're planning on doing so i'm just going to scrape the excess off of the areas that i want to be gray so that when it dries it's easy to see kind of where i want to hit the next kind of color now again this isn't a real kind of over rocky terrain we wanted this quite muddy quite dirty this section so again i've got all these rocks that i've kind of carved into the polystyrene that i'm just gonna take the excess off smooth them out so that when they get painted in the lighter gray they'll have a, a slightly different texture to the rest of the terrain so let's touch base on the next technique. The next technique is using the postcrete. Now, like I explained, there were two types of postcrete, slightly thicker chunk stuff, and then the thinner stuff. And the thinner stuff is brilliant. It has really fine gravel in it. And I'm gonna try and show you, I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the camera very well. Um, but you can see that it's it's just really fine. And that's the stuff you want. You want the really fine powder stuff because the tiny grit in it looks really great on the roads. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and I'm just gonna douse a few areas in this so you can see how the effect works. This is one of the steps that I do with the post creep. And I do this while the, the whole coat is still damp because what I want it to do is to suck up the moisture and really stick 
to the coat. The other way I do it is once it's gone off, I'll then use a uh, hand spray just to activate the water area and then sprinkle a dusting over it. And that will then grip to the underneath of the cement and you can add this texture throughout. And I will show you in this video a bit later on, but uh, we're going to just hit this area here. So this is an embankment. And what I like to do with embankments is kind of just shake the grit on the top and let it cascade down the front and what this does it just looks a lot more natural and it will give a slightly different texture as well now it's going to be quite difficult to see this but i'm going to zoom i'm going to get the camera and kind of zoom straight in and i kind of take a few pinches and i'll just flick it at the embankments and it doesn't matter if you get bits on the road it all adds to the texture to the grit that you're desperately trying to get from your courses and we really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked our channel and please hit the notification bell because there is going to be so much more that we can give you now you could sprinkle this stuff all over your course if that's what you wanted to do but I like to use this as an accent grit, really kind of hitting some areas. So let's take this edge here. I've gone quite heavy with it and you can see where some of the powder is still dry. I've got an old bottle full of water and I'm just gonna spritz the surface until I can't see no light gray now what that's done is now activated the postcrete and created a lovely grippy texture take a closer look at the texture falling down here so as you can see you can see the texture now coming through the embankment all these tiny little grits that just really do make your terrain come to life and when it dries it looks fantastic and again it's so durable and it's so hard the fine grit post creep the base is wet so i've already put a layer of cement over this because i want this to activate on the base and you're also going to need a spray bottle for this effect now what i'm going to do is apply almost like a an avalanche like small stones and pebbles have kind of fallen down over the course of however long a bit of erosion effect i guess is the word, best word to use what i'm going to do is come from behind it and i'm just gently going to sprinkle right over the front now what and then i'm going to just activate that layer and then i'm going to do it again activate and again until i'm happy with the desired look and again what this will do is it will create a different color on top of the mud so you'll have this kind of gravelly gray color on top of the mud and the mud will be underneath and then on the road we're kind of going to have all this nice little gritty area just down here that's now forming it's difficult to see the result because it's all wet and you won't get the different colors coming through but once it's dried you'll get this awesome texture this fine grit on top of the mud and it will just look fantastic so at this point you're not really going to see much tone difference because everything's wet and it's difficult to show you the different colors i've used until it goes dry but you can see all the tiny gravel where i've added postcrete and where I've left certain areas smooth, where I've left muddy areas, kind of left like this muddy dirt track throughout the whole thing. Fine gravel from the postcrete, and this will go a gray color. So you'll have this brown mud followed by these little piles of gray rubble with gray rocks sticking out of the mud in areas. 
Now, once this is all dry, I'll get a good look at what we're dealing with regarding colors and tones. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the effect. It hasn't really crept above zero over the last few days. So the cement is still quite green and hasn't really kind of done... Uh, the colours haven't come through just yet. It'll take a well, at this rate probably about four or five days for it to really dry out completely. And the frost has got to a few places, uh, which means some of the concrete has kind of cracked in a few areas where the water underneath has kind of froze. But it's nothing that we can't repair. And we've still got a, a couple more layers to do or in some areas when we dress it up. So this is where we're at at the moment. Like I've said, some of the areas are still a little green because it hasn't really dried out properly. The brown hasn't quite come through yet because it's still damp underneath. And you can just see where there's a, a little bit of uh, spray foam peeked through there, um, where I was just having a look to see where all the frost had got to it a bit. The joys of being on a farm, in a shed, and it's, uh, like I say, it's been pretty cold, but you can start to see some of the texture of the cement and the colorings coming through. And if I look at this little area just here, this is the postcrete. That's just neat postcrete that I kind of sprinkled on and it's kind of fallen down to create these kind of little avalanche effects. Uh, the rocks have come out pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with those. Um, if the brown doesn't come through because it's been kind of hit quite hard by the frost, I'll just use a little bit of brown paint and just kind of dry brush the mud back in um, so it's not the end of the world but overall the texture and the effect I'm really happy with and it's gone rock hard as promised so there you have it the best kept secret cement water and a bit of cement dye and it will create a hard skin over your trail. Now, these techniques I've shown you are all down to personal preferences, how you want to design, how you want to plan, how you want your trail to look. And you can add as much or as little as you want. You can put three layers on if you really wanted to, to really make it as solid as you can. I don't generally put too much on anything that the truck's not going to hit because it's not going to be taking too much of an impact. It's not going to have any wear on it. So I don't focus too much on the backgrounds or any embankments that I know my truck's not going to be hitting. But the areas in which are going to take a harder and more of a trail, then they will definitely get at least three coats. And then I'll be accenting with different colored cements and the postcrete so that it has the most amount of durability I can possibly give it. In part three, we're going to be looking at the detail and what we use to dress them up once we've finished our coating. And hopefully in there, there's going to be some tricks and tips that is going to help you with a really cheap, affordable way of making your course look just that little bit more realistic. Mm -hmm.